What do you get when you cross a cultural and art center with expansive rice fields, yogi hippies, and magic healers? Ubud, or as I like to call it, get stuck in traffic in a torrential downpour every day at 6 p.m. It's also a rabbit hole of personal development, mystical healing, and alternative medicines. And what can being here teach us about business? We'll talk about how to free up your time to focus on what matters and go from $10 an hour tasks to $10,000 an hour tasks. Plus, you'll get to see one of the coolest villas I have ever stayed in, and that's saying a lot. But first, subscribe and smash that like button so we can make more free videos. Let's get it. My name is Christian, and I've gone from a broke pizza delivery driver to making millions of dollars online while working from 25 countries over six different continents. This series, Digital Nomad Cribs, is about what home looks like when you can work from anywhere in the world. Keep watching to see how and where I live while learning more about how to start, grow, and scale a work from anywhere online business or visit digitalnomad.com to start your work from anywhere journey today. First of all, if you're anything like I was, the name Ubud might seem weird at first. I know the first time I heard it in 2014, it took me a minute to get the hang of it. The name Ubud, that's U-B-U-D, comes from the Balinese word Ubad, which means medicine. Now you already know Bali is a popular beach destination, but what has made Ubud, which is 45 minutes inland, such a popular spot? I mean tourists far outnumber locals, with the area seeing 3.8 million tourist arrivals per year, with 1.3 million people visiting Ubud's monkey forest, which I didn't dare step foot in for fear of having my iPhone stolen by monkeys. But here's the entrance and some monkeys in the parking lot for you. It turns out tourism in Ubud first started with Walter Spies, an ethnic German born in Russia who taught painting and music and dabbled in dance, at least according to Wikipedia. Spies entertained celebrities, including Charlie Chaplin, yes, that Charlie Chaplin, Noel Coward, Barbara Hutton, H.G. Wells, and Vicky Baum. He also brought in some of the greatest artists from all over Bali to teach and train the Balinese in the arts, helping Ubud become the cultural center of Bali. But in Ubud, monkeys and art aren't all there is to see. There's also yoga, meditation, crystal healing, breathwork, tantric workshops, and more. Basically, Ubud is everything Bali with a hippie jungle twist. Instead of beach clubs of Uluwatu, there's jungle clubs, and jungle cafes perched on the edge of a cliff, serving cappuccino with a side of a fear of heights. There's jungle resorts with multi-level infinity pools, and gyms called Jungle Box. You get it, it's the jungle. You can go from urban traffic to lush jungle winding hills on your scooter. And most distinctive of all, Every street you turn down in Ubud is filled with temples. Okay, enough of the travel channel. Let's switch to HDTV and go take a tour of this one-of-a-kind villa. But first, the obligatory coffee scene. Delicious. We're walking in now to show you guys the cribs part of Digital Nomad Cribs. But while we're there, Every video we have a lesson. So today I want to talk about $10 an hour tasks versus $10,000 an hour tasks. And if you want more on this, Perry Marshall wrote a book called 80-20 Sales and Marketing. And he breaks down in your business, what are the tasks that make you like $10 an hour? Responding to emails, customer service, posting on social media. And what are those tasks that make you $10,000 an hour? Adjusting your offer, coming up with better positioning, getting a partnership with a huge partner who can bring you unlimited clients. These are $10,000 an hour tasks. Now in your personal life and in your business, scaling up is mainly about replacing the $10 an hour tasks you already do, you know, like life admin, doing laundry, cooking, things like that. Something that somebody can literally do for $10 or less with $10,000 an hour tasks. And the more you spend your time in those $10,000 an hour tasks, the more each hour is gonna turn in making $10,000 an hour over time. So I once, when I was a kid, I heard somebody say, somebody who worked in a lawn care company remarked that their clients were too lazy to mow the lawn themselves. But it's not that they're too lazy. It's that if they could pay somebody $30 an hour to do something, well, they make 300, it's actually gonna cost them money to mow the lawn themselves, hundreds of dollars. And if they could get somebody else to do it, they can provide a job, stimulate the economy, and save themselves time. Because you can do anything you want in life, but you can't do everything. So if you want time to focus on what's important, you gotta replace those $10 an hour tasks. Now I'm gonna put a table on the screen right now so you can see which tasks are worth more and which are worth less, according to Perry Marshall. 
But one of the cool things about coming to places like Bali is you can move up in your tasks. So here we have a housekeeper and she comes every day. She makes us breakfast. She asks us the day before what we want. She does our laundry so my laundry just gets replaced magically. I don't have to think about it. She takes it out, she brings it back, it's folded and pressed. Don't have to worry about food or cleaning up anything. So we're gonna walk you through the house right now but I want you to think about what are the tasks in your life that you could replace? Even though it might not be that hard for you to do them but it's still creating friction in your life and it's keeping you from focusing on those tasks that are actually gonna make a big difference. Because today, tomorrow, next week, not making these shifts isn't gonna make that big a difference to your life. But over the next year, three years, five years, the difference is extraordinary. So let's take a look through the house and we'll get more into that. Here we've got the koi fish pond right when you walk in. Uh, I think maybe they think I'm gonna feed them because every time I walk by they kind of all go crazy and jump all around. But this leads right into, you know, the egg bowl over here, the infamous egg bowl. And then the bedroom, the living room. The crazy part about this house is that just the whole thing kind of opens up right out into the jungle. So you wake up in the morning and you see the view from bed and it's really cool because the jungle is out there, the sun's rising over it. You can see the mountains in the distance all while you're laying in bed right here. Now again, you're getting a lived-in house tour right now, but we've got those shots from when we first got here. Now one thing cool about this house is the little details everywhere. So you can see on the ceiling, there's designs. I'm gonna come over here and show you underneath the sink, in the master bathroom, there's these ping pong balls. So just everywhere you go in this house, there's little details like that that are, you know, kind of abnormal. Like let's go in the bathroom and we've got these a little bit of quirky art pictures. We've got the Barbie art. And then one thing I love is that instead of a mirror on the Van Lee in the master bathroom, it just opens up to the outside. And you can see there's a little place for their blessings out there. But you can walk right out the side of this master bathroom to the pool, again, which overlooks the jungle. So we're gonna walk right out here. Behind me is the pool. More of like a mini pool, a dipping pool, if you will. So you can see the living room back there. I love it because you can come out here and you can meditate in the morning right on this cushion over here. And it's outside, so you don't have to be like in your bedroom meditating. And we've got this little infinity pool, and it's hard to tell from up here, but there's, there's rice paddies, there's a river down there, and just like a massive drop off. Really don't think the camera does it justice. But one of the cooler pools, and then Try to show you that view down there. Oh yeah, you can kind of see it. So just those rice terraces, a river, and this whole thing opens up to it. And then you can see we've got this big deck over here, all leading out to the jungle. We've got the kitchen, this bar stools, and then you know one of the most unique things about this house is it's really kind of like this, what's that? it's like pop art deco mid-century modern. I don't even know what to call it. Um, but you can see like this furniture here is really kind of something in itself. So I want you to take out a piece of paper and just write down what are the tasks in your life that you're doing right now that of course you could keep doing, but that you could hand up to somebody else whether that's Instacart to do your grocery shopping for you, somebody to do your laundry, uh, or anything else that you have to do that's kind of repetitive and that can be replaced. And then you wanna replace those. You know, you don't wanna leave a void there. We actually wanna replace those with those $10,000 an hour tasks. So over time, your time is worth more and more and more. And if you're just thinking about this, not in your personal life, but your business, what are those tasks in your business that have to be done? Customer support. I know that was one when I started scaling that I kept on my plate for way too long. Those tasks that you could definitely train somebody to do, it's gonna be more work up front, but over time it frees you up to focus on what really matters. So I hope you like this villa tour, one of the most unique villas I've ever stayed in. Beautiful um, Ubud spiritual center, yoga center, hippie center. Come check it out if you get a chance. That's all for today. See ya on the next one. Starting and scaling a business is hard enough as it is. You don't have to do it alone. 
Learn how to use the power of marketing to build a life you don't need a vacation from and join the WFA family at digitalnomad.com. Oh, actually, this is a very interesting kind of rice. This is basmati rice. It goes with a lot of dishes. You can eat it. And actually, if you come up here, sir. This is magical grass from the land of Ubud. And actually, that means medicine in a local culture. I'd like you to have a bit. Don't be funny with me. Oh, <laughs> yeah.